Helping you live healthy. November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month. Every year, more than 200,000 cases of lung cancer are reported. And while a lot of people blame the disease on smoking, people who have never smoked a day in their life can easily develop it. Like most cancer journeys, the best way to fight and survive it is early detection. Joining me now is Dr. Alexis Vasquez from Memorial Hospital. Good morning, Dr. Vasquez. Good morning, Corey. What are the key signs and symptoms that people should look out for, especially if they have a chronic cough? So when it comes to lung cancer, uh, there's no specific signs um, other than a cough occasionally. But once again, this is very rare. And lung cancer detection is early detection is the way, is our only way to really detect this early as far as lung malignancies. Now, what are some of the common causes of lung cancer? Because many people think that, oh, it's from people smoking and things like that, but that's actually just a stigma for this, for this disease. What if a person has never smoked in their life? I mean, they can obviously still get this. So the vast majority of individuals were smokers or have been smokers for primary lung cancer. However, there is a type of lung cancer that's actually the seventh most common cause of death of all malignancies. And that unfortunately has little, no symptoms other than a cough or some genetic predisposition from a family member. Um, all right. So, I mean, especially like what if it's not in your family? What if it's not malignant like that? You know, they just get it out of nowhere. I mean, for example, my twin sister was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer and she's currently battling that right now. And she has never smoked in her life. We don't have it in our family, but she just developed a cough and the doctors are saying it's environmental. I mean, can that be a case too where, you know, something with the environment can expose people to that? So there are some malignancies that are directly linked to environmental, uh, but the most common is this one called uh, bronchovelar carcinoma. It affects women, uh, unfortunately, like your sister, uh, over men. Uh, it ranges from young. It can start as, as young as 30 years old. It can develop as we get older. It's a fairly common malignancy. We see it very often, um, and, and it happens mostly on individuals who have never smoked a day of their lives. All right, and what are the first steps a person who identifies with one or more of those symptoms? What do they need to do? Where can they go and to make sure that they find out if it really is lung cancer or not? So the first thing is to go see your physician and normally start off with an x-ray if there's something, but sometimes the x-rays normally don't show anything unless it's kind of advanced or there's a significant lesion on there. From there on, it'll be a CAT scan and the CAT scan at that point would determine if there's a lesion, if there's something that needs to be further investigated. There are some new blood tests and inhalation tests that are on the market. None of them have really been FDA approved, but it's promising for the future. But right now, the best course is to get ahead of it, see your physician, and see if it's something that needs to be worked up in the future. All right, and is it you know pretty simple? I mean, that what if we get screened for lung cancer annually, we could prevent lung cancer from being too late to treat? I mean, is it really that simple? It is. Uh, when we think of lung cancer in a broader uh, term, there's more people that die from lung cancer than breast cancer and colon cancer combined every year. And until most recently, our screening process hasn't been the best. But now we have early detection lung cancer. It's a very simplistic test with a simple CAT scan that takes maybe five minutes to go through a tube and come right back out with no dye and you'll have an answer fairly, you know, within seconds of, of having the test. Well, that is great information. Thank you so much, Dr. Vasquez, for joining us this morning. It's my pleasure.